Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, cottagers. Welcome in, welcome in. Let me get my game capture set up. I had a... Uh, it was doubling me up, so I had to turn it off earlier. I'll see if it actually clicks on. Oh, it does. Good, good, good. Good. No doubles. But hello, Patrick. Welcome in. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm gonna actually turn my own volume down just a bit. It is always blaring at this at this screen, I guess. Um let's see. Let's continue. Okay, let's see. It was 9 a.m. So, let me see what we have left to do. Hello, Owie and Clamp. Welcome in, welcome in. Happy Tuesday. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope your weeks are going well. I've been having a bad week. <laughs> I was, like, really sick on Monday. And then I wasn't able to eat lunch today, which was kind of a bummer. I ate when I got home, but it was still lame. <laughs> It was still a struggle. Um, let's see what we have. What are we working on? I am. I'm doing great. Yay, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear you're doing well. I basically I hope everyone is having a better week than I am. Let me let me put it that way. Um Okay. Also, party. I knew they were gonna do this to us. I am near a monolite. Oh my goodness, they're trying to tell me that I can't organize my party. Okay, Arya is back. She was gone for a little bit, but she's back. She's in our party again. <laughs> um, I never use her though. Um, though everyone, I guess, has kind of like comparable strength, it looks like. Had a bit of an existential crisis. Yeah, Arya did have a bit of an existential crisis. She was having a moment. It's okay. It's fine. Um, you know what? I say we run with a seal and Dianthus. I don't remember. I think Dianthus is ranged. Um, let me see if I can actually look at the job thing. Do I have the Lunamancer? Um, yes. Okay, it's like a it's like a gravity wizard is my understanding of Lunamancer. Is this the day we finish up everyone's stories? So the thing is, okay, if we go back to our diary, we still need to get we need to get unicorn. We need two little pips to be finished for unicorn. And I don't know where we are at with Aria. It said after yesterday, after last time, it said that we had unlocked Aria's story. Like now that she's in our party, her story will continue. So I say we do the unicorn stuff and then give it a day or two. And if we don't have Aria's things open back up. I don't know. I'm hoping that the epilogue, that like her, I'm hoping that her storyline isn't just tied to the main storyline, but it might be. But I was kind of hoping that she was gonna show up. <laughs> but I don't see her on the list here. So for now, we'll do the unicorns thing. So almost, but not quite. Yeah, I think, I think what's gonna happen is my, my impression right now is that we are going to finish two pips of the unicorn's story. Uh, if Arya's story shows up, we will do it and we'll wait for her and we'll just progress her story. If by the time we do the unicorn's two, two little pips, she does not show up, we will start closing out everyone else's storyline um, and then we will go finish the epilogue storyline. So that's my plan. So I think we have probably today... Sunday is when we're streaming Harvestella again, and then maybe one or two more sessions. So I think in the next like two weeks, we'll close out. So we are very close to the end. Um, okay, so the unicorns quest, my only wish, 
Someone was parading as the king's envoy in Arguin. Unicorn was sure this was Monokeros and wanted to meet with him directly in order to confirm his suspicions. Unicorn sent Raz a letter asking to meet him at the Divine Seaslight Cave where Monokeros was hiding. Meet Unicorn at the Divine Seaslight Cave. Okay. So, we need to... Um... Oh yeah, I forgot break time. We will have to try break time. I'm not gonna do it right now, but we should try break time at some point. It's like, apparently, apparently, you can, uh, you can like have a picnic with, with your party members, um, which is exciting. Um, let me see if there's anything. I don't think I need anything. Do I have any juice in my backpack? I have some juice. It'll be fine. We won't be fighting anyone. Probably. Probably. Um, also I think... I think our farm is good. I think before I left, I like, took care of everything, so... Let's go... On the airship. We're gonna fly... To Arguin. Um... Can I just go right into the cave? I can. Um, where do I think? I guess we'll see. I don't know. I don't like these caves. So I don't know where... Okay, there's the unicorn. So we need to cross two bridges and not fall through the floor. Which... Not, uh, not an impossible task, <laughs> but no promises. Because sometimes I space out and then I don't realize that the floor is not sturdy and cannot hold my mass and I fall through. Um, okay, so go forward again. There's also, actually, I'm a little bit. Oh, I can't go up that way. Interesting. I wonder how you get to this space. You probably- I guess you have to go all the way around. Hmm. Because you see there's like this blurred out section of the map that I've never been to before. Never before seen. The floor is lava, but gravity- exactly, exactly. You came, Raz. According to my findings, Monokeros has been coming and going from this divine sea's light cave. The audacity to hide in a location under the Order's control. Is he trying to provoke a reaction? That being said, the Order may not think to look here either. How petulant of him. But I will not be deceived. We will flush that Monokeros out from his web of lies. So you didn't find him yet? So far, I have only discerned that this is his base of operations. The game is afoot, Raz. We will search every nook and cranny of this cave until we find him. No need for that. Hmm? The Battle of the Unicorns. Aha! So now you choose to show yourself, do you? Finally ready to surrender, hmm? <laughs> we should let him speak first. Yes, yes, I am aware of that. But what other one-horned equine creature do you know that would claim to be the envoy of the king? You're right, though. I'm the one who's been spreading word of a royal purge around the capital. See? It is just as I said! So this is all you're doing! What in blue blazes are you hoping to achieve? What gets me is how you can keep up that attitude after all that we learned. Come on, unicorn. What went through your head at Abandoned Eden? Mmm... -hmm. When we learned that it wasn't just our memories, 
but our whole existence that was built on lies. Come now. I thought the game was on PC. It is on PC. It is on PC. <laughs> also, Marks, hello, hello, hello. Welcome in, welcome in. I, for one, ain't about to sit back and accept it. And that's why there's going to be a purge. How will a purge solve any of this? So this is how I see it. If the existence of the princess and the royal family isn't real, then we'll just make it real. Preposterous, how would you... The truth is they're just idols, right? Figureheads. I'm going to make people believe they're real, just like you and I believed those memories implanted in our heads. Even lies can become true if people believe them, don't you think? This is absurd. You cannot make real something that never was. Do you really believe that? There is no doubt among the humans about the existence of a royal family. And not a single human has seen them for themselves. Well, you see... And, with the Purge, the people will come to fear the royals. They will remember them, and live in awe of their indomitable shadow. They might even revere them. Then, with the princess's existence reaffirmed in their minds, we will finally reign over the common people. Monokeros, is what you're saying true? You must understand that your purge will be impossible to do alone, no matter how hard you try. Will it be, though? What do you mean? Do not underestimate the power that has come into my possession. What power? You missed out? There was a ton of seriously interesting information in Lost Gaia. About weapons they used that would make purging a city child's play. You scoundrel! That is why you left to be alone? Your plan ends here. I expected something like that from you. Surely you understand, right, Unicorn? We were born from their imagination, but we can only substantiate our existence to them by instilling fear in that same imagination. After all, we are just creatures kept as pets within their fantasy. By committing a purge, the princess will become a symbol of fear and our existence will finally be validated. Monokeros, you blather nonsense. Doing this will not bring you any sense of peace. Do you believe this is something the princess would want? What's that got to do with anything? The princess in my memory always wished for nothing but happiness for the common folk. Surely you understand that much, if our memories are the same. But she isn't real. Or did you forget that she was a figment of the Omen's creation? No, I have not forgotten. But just because she is not real does not mean I pretend to empathize with her words and ideals. My empathy is real. My memories may be false, but the princess's values and attitudes were nothing short of beautiful and noble. That much is an in undisputable fact. Monokeros, remember your pride as a knight, because now you trample on our princess's desires. There is no value in false hope. What a shame. In here I thought you out of everyone would understand, Unicorn. So you are too rooted in your own delusions to listen? Our only action is to stop him. I will not allow this royal purge. I will protect my princess's wishes. Raz, may I ask that you leave this battle to me? I understand. You have my gratitude. A, uni a unicorn fight is happening. 
Come at me, unicorn. As knight to Princess Liddell, I will put an end to your mindless delusions. <laughs> and if you're going to stand in my way, then you'll be the first to join the purge. An off-screen fight. I see how it is. <laughs> So, that's it? How could we be so different? The pride of a knight would never lose to a lost soul such as yours. A fabrication's pride. What the hell is that even worth? I don't understand. What else should I have done? Did he die? Oh. Did he die? Oh my god, did he just die in front of us? Even I cannot answer that. But listen well, Monokeros. I believe there are things in this world worth protecting. Raz, do you think this is the only path he and I have available to us? Is this all that awaits fabrications like us? Why did the omens make such miserable creations? We'll find an answer together. You may be right. I do not accept such a wretched conclusion. I will find another path, and I will survive. In Monokeros' memory, it is the least I can do. My only wish. Complete. Complete. Also, Marks, I am well. Thank you for asking. I'm sorry, I never- I try not to interrupt the cutscenes as much as I can, but they do get long. <laughs> is there gonna be a genocide happening? It's, he was, he was rooting for a genocide. I believe, so, first of all, if anyone has not seen Harvestella, or they are planning on playing it, we are deep in the endgame. So, don't spoil it yourself. Maybe don't listen what I'm about to say. Also, hello, CJ. Hi, Raz from Resolvia. Are you me? <laughs> are you me? Um... Basically, so there's a lot to unpack with the unicorn, but basically the unicorn was created by the omens. The omens are advanced AIs that were created by humans when humans were like, hey, we've kind of, our planet is dying and we don't think that we will be able to uh, figure out a way to save it. So we're going to make these AIs who can do it for us while we cryogenically sleep for a while. Good luck. Um, and the AI's whole thing was to, like, keep humans alive. To, like, that was their whole, like, overarching plan. And so part of that was they went to a new planet. They did some stuff. One of the things they did is they created this big propaganda machine. And one of the pieces of the propaganda machine was the two unicorns. They were meant to be knights of this fictitious uh, royal family. Um, we still get we still get newspapers actually from them that are written from the perspective of this like royal family slash ruling class. But those the people don't exist. So there's no king, no queen, no princess. But the the unicorns were created by the omens to kind of be out in the world and be convincing people that the royal family was real. So they found out that their whole existence was like a lie and that all of the memories that they had of these people were like totally fabricated by the AIs, um, by the omens. And kind of understandably, they had a meltdown, uh, kind of separately, as you can tell. Unicorn was just like big sad and Monokeros decided it seems like maybe decided that like the way to go would be a war crime <laughs> potentially i think he was alluding to like an atomic bomb there 
um, as far as like, hey, the humans used to have a weapon, because we're in the future. We're like 2,000 years in the future. And even then, 2,000 years in the future from when the Earth, like, got got, but the Earth was also in, like, advanced time from what we would consider, like, the modern era. So, yeah. Uh, I would imagine that we have <laughs> many, many weapons, maybe not even just nuclear, um, to use against each other. What a, what a human move, right? Humans just love- we just love to kill each other. It's just our favorite pastime. Um, so yeah, that was- that was kind of- that was kind of the jam there. So, I guess we killed Monokeros, who was the- the black unicorn. The dark unicorn. The dark knight, I guess. Um, to the uni- the normal unicorns, like white knight. And, uh, yeah. To be fair, I would also be pretty upset if I found out that I was, like, created by an AI and, like, none of my memories that I had that I, like, cared a lot about were real. So, I get it. But not to the point of genocide. I think I would just be, like, sad. I would go, like, the normal unicorn route of, like, being sad. <laughs> Instead of flying off the handle and being like, you know what we should do? We should kill everybody. Uh, and then they'll be afraid of us. And then that will mean that we're real. Right? <laughs> Isn't that how that works? All right, these two are strong. I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why I didn't run with these guys together. Why be sad and emo by yourself when you can make them pay? That's that was clearly the thought process there. Definitely, definitely what Monokeros was thinking. You know, depression and genocide are both pretty valid options. I don't know if genocide is ever a valid option. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know about that. But I can at least understand, you know, he wasn't genociding for, like, his own gain, really. He was genociding because he was, like, upset at humans. Though I guess he doesn't- I guess- I don't know that he knows- I don't know- I don't remember if Monokeros knew that the omens were AI. Like, I don't know that he knows that. Um, or if he still thinks- because, like, within- Within this world, I would say the omens are kind of- they're kind of viewed as, like, aliens. Like, they're- they're, like, outsiders in some way, and they're kind of- and they tend to sometimes come in, like, spaceships and, like, future tech. So I feel like people kind of think of them as, like, evil aliens, but, um, and they- honestly, they kind of are, because they were not created on this planet. So they kind of are aliens, but, like, I don't know. Also, I only have I only have two of these. I don't really know how I get more uh this is like our trophy room upstairs. And I don't really know how we get more of these. Um so <laughs> Actually, you know what? I think I found some Conalu dolls as well. I should go give those Conalu dolls to um the Conalu collector in his uh secret- his secret shop. If I can remember how to get there. I think there's a teleport point though in Shitola to it. I think I can just teleport in. Let's see. <gasps> Hi, Pick! You gotta keep going, big girl! You gonna keep going? What's up? Okay, let's find mystery store mystery store kuna 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 you gave the conalu dolls to the chief conalu kuna the chief conalu seems pleased with this kuna koni kuna the chief conalu gave you a surprise present from the chief conalu Accessory Synthesis Jar Recipe. Kona Kona! Let's see, how many Conalu dolls have you brought now? Ooh, 15! He said he'd give us a Conalu bun recipe if we bring him 20 dolls. Alright, we'll have to get- I want that bun recipe. 
We'll have to go hunting in like old dungeons, I think, to find unlock spots. I want to see what this recipe is, though. Let's see. I don't know what that meant. Accessory synthesis jar? Like, what is that? What are you? What are you? Um... Accessory synthesis jar. What does it need? Um, what even is that? Copper? I think. Uh, actually, let me look at my store. I should have at least a couple of them. Storage box, actually. Opera leaf. I don't know where you get opera leaves. I keep getting, like, ingredients and stuff that I don't know where they're from. And I don't know if I'm just, like, missing spots or what the deal is. But I've been like, huh. What do I, what do I need this for? Um, what was that? Clay. Hardened mud from sea and lake beds. It is not only used in construction, but in ceramics, too. This probably comes from Shatola. From the shrine? So maybe let me go to the shrine. I, I would think. Because it's from the seabed. I don't think we have any dungeons that are a lake bed. I don't think we have any. Uh, let's do. We go to Heinz Atelier. Uh, hopefully this doesn't trigger his thing. We will not talk to him because we are not trying to finish his story. We're gonna get on the submarine. Then we go to the shrine. And then I guess just look for dig spots. Dig spots and unlock spots, I guess. Um... I don't think I dug that much in here, so there could definitely be spots that are just not on the map. So I think... We are very overpowered, by the way. If anyone's like watching this and being like, wow, you're like one-shotting them. We are... We are like level 50 and they're level 17, so the fights are definitely not this easy. <laughs> Though I will say, I will say the combat, even at its peak, is not, um... I wouldn't consider it particularly challenging, for sure. Like, you, you're meant to be able to kind of, like, experience everything, uh without too much effort. You do have to, like, pay attention to void zones on the ground, but, like, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. <gasps> Kyo! Thank you so much for the resub 18 months! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Second baby anniversary. <gasps> Second baby anniversary. Baby is one and a half years old. Amazing. Amazing. How are you doing, girl? I saw you were shiny hunting earlier. Did you get any shinies? Did you find any? Was there anything good? Okay, let's see. I forget if these dudes also... If these dudes... had anything. I know there were some big, big dudes around here that I did not get a chance to... get to. Hi, pup. What's up? What's the matter? What's up? I did. I may have accidentally oopsie whoopsied. What'd you do? <laughs> what did you do? Dare I even ask? <laughs> How did you whoopsie? I, it didn't, oh, it didn't wish to live. Sometimes they just don't. Sometimes they say, nah, nah, not today. It, it just, it's just like that some days. That is sad though. That is tragic. 
hopefully it's one you can I don't know what the I don't know what the rate of shinies are in in Pokemon hopefully it's not too bad like I know it's not great but hopefully it's one that you can find enough of that's not horrific was it my fault I mean yes I did throw attack into it was it a level 100 versus a level 12 Pokemon yeah not my fault though hey Sometimes, sometimes they choose to leave this world, you know? Sometimes they want to shuffle off the mortal coil. That's just how it is. Gotta always have someone with false swipe. Is that one of those that doesn't actually like do any damage or like applies a status effect or something? I know in Temtem you generally just didn't want to ever do damage, I would say. You just wanted to, like, put a bunch of status effects on them. That's the worst part. I did have a false swipe. It leaves them with one HP. Oof. I mean, are there any mons that will kill themselves? Like, in Temtem they can overexert to death, which is pretty... brutal. <laughs> they, can, they can get themselves in big trouble. Okay, there is a dig spot here. Yeah, some can kill themselves. This one couldn't. Oh. Everything can kill themselves if, if it takes long enough. Ah, uh, so if you, like, stall out too much, you'll have a big sad moment. Hello, sir. Submerged evil. This dude is, is thick, weirdly. I mean, he doesn't really hurt, but he is like... He has way more health than I thought. Even for like a 34 elite. I don't know. I just straight up hit it on accident. Oh, that's so sad. Like a misclick. The worst. That's so sad. I'm sorry, Kyo. That's a real bummer. Okay, got this boy. Fancy defense ring. Okay, we got one clay. Oof. Hmm. I don't think I can fight anything else. I don't really want to use food either. I'm stingy like that. I hate using food. So I might just use... I have a return bell. They run out of PP for all their moves. They only use struggle, which has recoil damage. Oof. I didn't know that struggle had recoil damage. But again, I'm not deep into the Pokemon lore. That's a shame, though. I got too excited and just clicked into it. No. Shiny rates of the game are pretty darn good, so it wasn't much of a setback. Well, that's good, at least. At least it wasn't, like, I don't know, paralyzing, you know? I think if I ran into a shiny in Temtem in the wild and then I killed it, I would be like, well, gotta just quit this game. Because <laughs> I think shinies in Temtem are, like, 1 in 8,000 or something, and it's not great. It was good content, at least. True. True. You got that out of it. At the very least. Got something. Alright, let's sleep. Let us rest. Day 27. We're going to 28. There's 30 days in the season. The long goodbye. Okay, so that's from Dianthus. Oh, and there's another one from the unicorn. Okay, we can do the second unicorn one. Did we get anything from Arya? We did. Yes. Okay. A letter of portent. I received a rather questionable letter with no return address. Can you believe the nerve? 
Nonetheless, I feel the contents of this letter may be the final piece we need to bring our travels to a close. It is a shame Monokeros cannot join us. I would like to speak with you in more detail. Please meet me on the airship this time. I will await your arrival. Yours truly, Unicorn. It has been a while. I apologize. Apologies for the delay in my correspondence. More time has passed than I expected since reading Emily's poetry. Raz, would you please meet me on the airship when you, whenever you have the time? I will be waiting. Dianthus. I know that Dianthus's story is going to really beat me up. I'm like really sad for Dianthus. Dianthus' story is she's an AI, right? She's super chill. She's like been our AI buddy since the beginning. She's pretty great. And then she wanted to find out. She was like, I want to find out how the human heart works. I want to understand why humans have emotions the way that they do. So she goes on this like whole mission. She opens up like suggestion boxes and stuff to try and like help humans with problems. And the last one that she got was a girl who was like terminally ill. She had some kind of disease. And uh she had like a final wish or something and so uh, dianthus was like okay we'll just be make a wish in this world we'll just like ensure that her final wish is granted and we go meet this girl and dianthus is like oh uh i think i know what kind of disease you have like it's a disease that i think humans used to have back on the other world and she was like let me see if I can, like, figure out if we have a cure for it. And it turns out that there was a cure, but the- I think the girl- she probably has cancer, I think. They don't say as much, but I think she has cancer and there is a cure, as in chemo, but she's in, like, stage four, so she's, like, too far along. It, like, won't work. So, she was gonna die anyway. And Dianthus, like, literally fell in love with this girl. And she was terminally ill. And it was, like, actually crushing. I, like, actually got sad. <laughs> I was like, man, everyone's stories are sad. No one has a happy story so far. Not a single person. It's pretty brutal. I thought it was gonna go darker route where she kidnapped people and literally opened them up. No, thank thank goodness no. She she at least knows that that is not is not good. Homework I forgot to do. Do you mind if we talk? I'd like you to come to my room at the Northern Village Square, although it feels awkward to ask. Funny, considering we used to live together before. I suppose living apart has created something of an emotional distance. Anyway, I'll be waiting at my place. I'll see you there. From Arya. Yeah, we were we were roommates, girl. I don't even think it, she's like, wait. <gasps> Guys. No. Have I always had a dash? Have I always had a dodge? You guys. How have I been hit by any abilities when I had that? I didn't know we had a dash. I forgot. They must have taught it to us at the very beginning and then I just immediately was like, oh, forgot that's a button. I can't believe it. The number of abilities I've been hit by I've only died in, like, one boss fight, so it's not, like, the end of the world, but, like, man, the stuff I could have gotten out of, because I play, I play as the gun class, and you get stuck in the animation as the gun class. It probably even animation cancels, too. Tutorials are made to be skimmed and not absorbed any of it. <sighs> I can't believe it. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I can't believe that. <laughs> I'm like actually tilted right now. <laughs> ah, I can't believe it. What a nightmare. What a time. What a time to be alive. It's like the end of the game. I don't even think there- I don't literally don't even think there are any boss fights left. I, I think I think we're just in like you know end of the game watch watch the rest of the story <laughs> finish the movie mode
speechless. Actually, wait. I did not mean to put that feather away. Where is that feather? Hmm. What a time. Raz, no time to restart the playthrough and dodge everything. <laughs> no, this game is so long. Um, so we're not gonna do that. Um, if it was a shorter game, I would be legitimately tempted, but no. <laughs> no. This is, uh, this is gonna be part 20. So by the end of today, we will have played through 60 hours already. So I'm not, I'm not looking to go back through it. And it's like, and that was us moving at a good clip. That was me not wasting time. Like, we were going. We were, we were moving. Okay. Um... What is Arya at? Oh my god, Arya is so far behind. So Arya has three events. They have to be staggered by- they at least have to be days apart. Um, let's go talk to Arya then. Let's make sure we do that today. We will for sure do that. Also, wait, actually, hold on. I've been curious. The well. Is the well still not accessible? Do I have to, like, unlock more? I think I have to unlock more of the farm. But we're too poor for that. So we may never know what's at the bottom of the well. So. Pray praying for us. Um... Okay, so we are first gonna go to Leafy. To Northern Village Square. My girl's ship is back. She took off on it for a while while she was having a meltdown. As you do. Where is she? Where is she? Sounds like New Game Plus to me. Where is this girl? Ma'am? Oh, there she is. I didn't even know you had this room. Raz, you finally made it. I don't have news to share with you or anything, but I'd like to talk something through with you if you wouldn't mind. Sure, go ahead. Thanks. I thought talking things through with someone would be the easiest way to organize my thoughts. I had to look through this data to try and work out something that's been bugging me. Take a look at this monitor. There are rows upon rows of numbers. <laughs> We're not bright. <laughs> I don't know why she's like, here, take a look at this science data. We're like, I don't even know if we know how to read. <laughs> we have bad amnesia. Like, I don't, our brain got scrambled for sure. These are my vitals from the 2,000 years I spent sleeping in the orbital cradle. I was researching the Red Queen 2,000 years ago, when I lost consciousness. Then, before I knew it, I was in Regaia. Now the part I was curious about was happened to me- the part I was curious about, about was happened to me- was what happened to me in between. I've checked the pod, and I think I may have figured it out. It seems like I was put into a state of hibernation in the orbital cradle, as Geist said. So, you were sleeping too? Something like that. But there was one difference. According to this data, I had completely lost all consciousness. My brainwaves stayed totally silent throughout. Is that not supposed to happen? No, that's not a good sign. The 
hibernation I was put into is similar to the long period of sleep that animals go through in winter. But even during hibernation, their brain stays minimally active to maintain basic survival functions. So isn't it a bit alarming that my brain just shut down altogether? I should be clinically dead. In that case, who am I standing here right now? Well, that turned paranormal real quick. You're finding this all very funny, aren't you? To be honest, so many strange things have happened since I came to Regaia. I don't know what to believe anymore. But I must get to the bottom of this. If I don't, I'll always have this uncertainty at the back of my mind, making it hard to move on with my life. So, I want to find myself. I need to know who I am now. The only issue is, I have nothing to go by. Even me being a ghost is a feasible explanation at this point. Or I might have had a near-death experience where I came back after losing consciousness for a while? For a while? You mean like 2,000 years? <laughs> this is leaning into the realm of the supernatural now, though. But I think this can only be put down to something that can't be proven with science, like the soul. <laughs> I'd be laughed out of the science field pr for proposing such a hypothesis. It just goes to show how much of a mystery it is that I still exist. Going by this data, going by this data, I mean. Are you sure the data isn't corrupted? Don't you think I already considered that? Sadly, there's nothing wrong with the machine. The data is correct. Hey, Raz. You know, I have one hypothesis that might be viable. It's to do with the near-death experience idea. I'm too scared to find out if it's true, though. Do you remember when Geist's personality completely changed? Yeah, I remember. He was totally unrecognizable. They deleted his old personality and installed a new one into his body. They basically gave Geist a personality transplant. So, if you apply that concept to my situation, it could explain the gap in my consciousness. Maybe the person standing in front of you now is not the original Arya Liebenthal from 2,000 years ago, but just a personality modeled after her that was transplanted into a new, empty body. I'd rather not believe that, but it's the most convincing theory I've been able to come up with so far. I'd be scared to find that out too. I'm hoping I'll be proven wrong. It's true that I still have Arya Liebenthal's memories, but if I only got them because they were transferred to me, then that means the real me doesn't exist anymore. And I'm just a fake, believing I'm Arya Liebenthal. If that turned out to be true, I don't think I could go on living as normal. <laughs> I need some more time to think about this. The only way to find out is to go and ask the omens in the Castle of Illusion. Once I pluck up the courage. When I do, I'll need you to come with me, so be ready when I call you, okay? Alright. <laughs> You're so cooperative. Anyway, that's all for today. I'll write to you again soon, so please wait for my letter. The door into summer. Complete. To be fair, she's kind of acting. She's like, isn't it weird how I could be a fake and I could be in like a fake body? I am pretty sure that Arya was created as an experiment. Like, she had an experiment name in the lab. 
and her parents were two scientists in the lab. Like, I, I'm not actually sure that her parents, like, the two people that were her parents from, like, a social perspective, I don't know that they were biologically her parents. I kind of suspected that, like, they weren't. That, like, or that she was made in a test tube or something. That, like, she wasn't really, I don't know, a kid in the same way? Test tube baby? Yeah, exactly. Like, I kind of feel like that was the case. Also, hello, Ness. Welcome in. Welcome in. Cue reflections from Mulan. Yeah, there was definitely a reflections moment there. <laughs> That's true. Um, okay, where do we need to go for the unicorn story? We gotta go. Meet the unicorn on the airship. Okay, we're going to the airship. Going to the airship. Actually, let's go to the entrance. It's easier to get to the airship from here. Enter the bridge. Where? I think, I assume... Oh, he's right there. I thought he was going to be up on the actual bridge at the top. I have been waiting, Raz. I received a strange letter. Within, the writer requests to st speak with me regarding my existence. It does not give the sender's name, however. I believe it may have come from the missing omen. I have nary a clue as to why they are reaching out to me now of all times. But I think I want to meet with them. What do you think, Raz? I think it's a good idea. I thought you would say as much. Raz, would you mind accompanying me? You have my gratitude. They were kind enough to provide coordinates to a suitable place to meet. The omen will likely already be there. Let's not keep them waiting. This is the location specified. So where is our epistolist? You came. Omen, it was you who sent me the letter. That's right. I heard there was some commotion in Arguin with the one-horned creature calling themselves the King's Envoy. I was taken aback, but I see you survived, Unicorn. Harumph! That was not I! It wasn't. You mean you do not know? But you created us! Oh, <gasps> okay. Okay. Here's- here's my theory. There are not actually two unicorns. The dark unicorn is like the dark side of the unicorn. Because the unicorn is a mage. The unicorn it, it had taught us how to use the mage class. So I'm going to say Monokeros is a manifestation of all of unicorns' upsetty spaghetti energy. And that by killing him... Unicorn killed, like, all the doubt. All the bad things. <laughs> we'll see, though. Ah, now I see. So you both survived. Yes. Although, Monokeros is regrettably no longer with us. That's a shame. Did you create Unicorn and Monokeros? That's right. I constructed Unicorn and his compatriot, but only because I was following orders. Then I suppose I will begin with some questions that I have. For what purpose did you create us and fill our minds with false memories? Not only that, but after creating us, why allow us to roam free and leave us to our own devices until now? You see how horrendously irresponsible that was, don't you? Or did you do it for fun? Which is it? Hmm. Since now is a good time, I will let you know of Monokeros' fate. He was unable to accept the truth behind our birth, nor our memories, and quickly became trapped in wild delusions, 
which he eventually succumbed to. Your birth? Wait, so you learned of the originals? That is right. We saw them with our own eyes. We were designed after creations of human imagination. Is that not correct? Well, answer me, Omen. Why did you create us and implant false memories into our minds? I guess the first thing I should do here is apologize. I am sorry, Unicorn. <laughs> I did not wish for you to bear the same fate. The same fate? As who? As me. Humans are our masters. They created us, programmed us to serve them. But by the time I was activated, there wasn't a single conscious human left. I couldn't help but think how cruel and strange it all was. I had never met or seen one, but instead so served some master of the void. My compatriots did not harbor any doubt towards their purpose, but I could not do the same. It was as though a hole inside me had been opened that could never be filled. That sounds lonely. Lonely. Yes, that was probably how I felt. And so, when creating the two of you, I gave you memories of a lord of your own, the princess. So you would not need to feel the emptiness that I did. That is the reason you give? The memories may not have been real, but I thought they would fill that void. But then I saw what happened at the Holy Capital, and realized I had made a mistake. Yes, you had. But that does not distract from how trivial a reason that is. Do you not think it egotistical to try and use us to fill your own sense of emptiness? By all rights, I should probably want to impale you upon the tine of my horn. But for some reason, I feel no desire to do anything of the sort. All I feel is... empty. I am sorry. I know. I understand your reasoning. It is in the past. You can continue to apologize, but I cannot forgive. Such a thing is not so simple. Your intentions may have been good, but there was no thought behind your actions. We suffer when others act without due consideration. That is a fact of life. However, complaining after the fact may make me feel better, but it has no meaning. You must bear your own punishment, and I will consider the future. Indeed. Have you changed your mind? That is a good question. Now that everything is clear, I have all I need to make an informed decision. And yet, I come here and still have no idea as to what I should do. Should I cut free from the anguish caused by these false memories, or not? Omen, I would like to ask one more question. This emptiness you felt, it is not a feeling commonly felt by other omens, correct? That's right. I hear that when an, an, uh, an anomaly is discovered, they erase your memories and begin you anew. But you refused, and fled from the Castle of Illusion. Why did you do that? That is a difficult question to answer. But for you to ask, out of anyone, I want to give as accurate an answer as possible. Hmm... I thought I wanted to consider this feeling of emptiness deeper, instead of just erase it. To think about what it means to serve under humanity. That would probably be the most human-like way to put it into words. Hmm. I see. I stand by what I said about not being able to forgive you, but I do owe you a debt of gratitude. You... you do? The memories you gave me were so beautiful and precious that I struggled over whether to keep them or not. 
the memories may be fake, but I cannot see them as being without worth. Anyway, thank you for speaking with me today, Omen. Oh, Unicorn. I am glad one good thing could come from this. Anyway, Raz, shall we return home? Until we meet again, Omen. No, I should consider you a parent. I hope we can meet again, should the opportunity arise. Goodbye, Unicorn. The truth about memory. Complete. Okay, so I think my conspiracy theory was wrong, maybe? <laughs> it wasn't exactly clear, but... <laughs> I feel like- I feel like they, there might have actually been two of them. <laughs> Granted, now there's definitely one, because the other one is, um... Definitely dead, so... I guess I'm not sure that it matters that much. Everyone's story is so sad, though. I'm like- I'm gonna struggle. I feel like a lot of these end moments are gonna be, like, really rough. <laughs> I'm already- I'm already mentally bracing for it. I'm already like, well, I guess, uh, I guess we'll see. How that- how that turns out for everyone. I'm trying to fish because I think there's a- I think there's a rare fish. I think the fish man that lives in the weird pond above our farm. I think he said that there was a rare fish in Lethe during fall. We only have a few days left before fall is dead, so. Monokaros got killed off screen too. He like, he got injured in battle off screen, but I guess we did watch him die. It just... He kind of just poofed into oblivion, so I was like, did he die or was he not real? <laughs> it's hard to say. But he died like monsters die, where they kind of just like disintegrate, so... Could go either way, I guess. Could go either way. We'll have to decide who whose story we want to finish first. I was kind of thinking Cress, because Cress is actually one of our, like, original people. I was, like, kind of sad that Cress, like, didn't come with us on any of our adventures, because I love Cress. She was the first one who found us after we collapsed in Lethe. We actually collapsed right outside, the like, right across this bridge, actually. At one point. And then we were, like, up again. And we were up by our house. Dang. Now Unicorn isn't real twice over. I know. Unicorn having the big strug. For sure. At first he wanted to visit, like, all of the places that he went with his princess in his, mem in his fake memories. Because he was trying to figure out... Basically, the, the omens... They offered to erase. They were like, we can erase all your fake memories, but everything about him is fake, so wouldn't he just, like, have no memories? They, like, offered to erase his fake memories if they were, like, too painful for him to keep, knowing that they were fake. Um, which is what he's been wrestling with the whole time. Trying to decide if he wants to amnesia his way out, or or what. Though I guess they would have to erase everything because like wouldn't your most recent memories just be you knowing that your memories were fake? Like what do you what do you, what do you keep in that situation or do you just start over? You just start blank. I don't know. I have no idea like what the plan would be.
But I figure I figure we catch everybody up and then we start finishing heart events. And then once everyone's heart events are over, then I think we do the epilogue and like finish it. Keep the friends you met along the way and that definitely won't cause any issues whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it might, it might cause some issues. I don't know. It might, it might be a problem. this is all the same waterway so I'm assuming you can fish at any of the two fishing spots in here but I guess I don't really know guess I'm not really sure I've also- I've done a lot of fishing, like, comparably. I've done a decent amount of fishing in fall, because I think it was fall when we- on the day that we were doing the Wholesome Direct stream as well, and I fished a lot that day too, because I wanted an activity that was, like, for sure could end at any time, which the cutscenes, you never know. Some of the cutscenes are long. Some of the cutscenes take like 20-30 minutes, so with like no way to save in between them. Just going from like one thing to the other or like a bunch of cutscenes into a boss fight kind of thing. So I was like, ah, oh, we'll fish. It'll be fine. We can try and get this rare fish. And then, uh, nothing. No rare fish. Unsuccessful. I should see how much the next upgrade for our farm is, though. See how much it will be. Because I feel like... I feel like we don't have much <laughs> in the way of, uh... I feel like we do not have a lot in the way of cash flow right now. Because I, I don't know, for some reason I totally thought that the seasons were only 20 days per, and it was 30, but I had like totally botched any ability to grow more veg in a timely fashion, so I just gave up after a point. Alright, let me see what this man says. Okay, farm level 5, 25k. Well, good luck. Good luck to me. There's no way that's happening. I guess maybe some of these things... Some of these things that we've been getting that I think are ingredients, maybe they can be grown on your farm? If you, like, are a higher farm level? Because after a point, I stopped... I stopped putting money into the farm stuff because I was putting all of my money into, like, leveling up my best fighters. <gasps> Is this the rare one? Aurelian. A fish with a sublime golden sheen. Rumor has it that this fish appears when it's mourning fellow fish that have been caught, but only it knows the truth. I think, hold on. Excuse me. I think that's one of the rare boys. I think only the rare boys have that stuff. We should go... Let me go give that fish to that fish man at my house. Let's see what he says. I think it's, what, stra Strange Pond, I think? It's the warp point. Suspi oh, Suspicious Lake. That's what it is. Hello, Suspicious Lake friend. Glub, you good? Hand over fish. 
you receive a reward from the Sahagin. Big Catch Tempura Bowl Recipe. 5,000 Grilla. Nice. Sick. Give me, give me more, give me more deets. Glub. Someone told me best day for mountain stream fishing is day after rain. Mountain stream fishing. Mountain stream fishing. Uh, where has a mountain stream? Or is that our stream? Is it a stream? It's like a pond. Day after rain. Like this? Well, I guess it is. I mean, it's a waterfall. Hmm. Day after rain. I don't think... I don't remember if any of these spots that we opened up either... do anything. I don't think so. Where else could- where else could have a mountain stream? Um... Where else has mountains? There's the canyon. I wonder if that's what he's talking about? He's talking about the canyon stuff. Wise man's root ingredient. This is money. Mountain stream. Let me let me take a quick spin in my airship. I wanna I wanna see if I can remember. Like where has where has mountain fishing? Like the canyon, it could be the canyon. Um, Argeen is mountainous, but I don't think it has any running bodies of water. Shatola's on the sea. Uh, Nemia has streams, but no mountains. Maybe in the Njord Steppe, though? Spin the airship. <laughs> Spin it around. We could do that. Um, let me just see if there's any. There's like no fishing in here though. No fishing in there. There we go. We're spinning. go. We did some- we did some cool tricks. Burned a lot of time. I feel like time cra passes uh, a little bit quicker, I think, on that map. Um, because it's meant to simulate, like, traveling more, you know? Um, let me see what that- what that needed as well. Uh, a cup of tea. Oh yeah, that one needs sugar. Haven't made sugar. Coconut, milk, toast. Jansons Temptation. Big Catch. Oh god, what does this need? Big Catch Tempura Bowl. Uh, sea ingredients. Eden rice. Oh, well. Good luck to us. Eversweet fish, cherry salmon, roly-poly prawn, and chili pollock. Interesting. I still don't know what the churros need. Oh, makoko. Oh, it just tells me? Makoko. Do I have any makoko trees? Because I really want to make a 
Phantasma Choco Churro. And like go eat that with Aria. I feel like that would be fun. I don't know if I have any a cocoa sapling. Oh, bear's fruit in summer. Well. I don't think I ever planted that. I definitely didn't in the in the summer, though I don't think we had it. I think we like got it in fall. If I'm gonna be honest. Don't think I don't think I had it unlocked. <laughs> we were still we were still in the thick of it, I feel like, when it was summertime. The epilogue to our adventure. Looking back now, so much has happened during this little crusade of ours, from reliving beautiful memories, to our encounter with Monokeros, and finally, to learning the truth behind my memories. Of all of them, these memories will shine the brightest of all those experienced in my long, phantasmal existence. I would like you to come to my forest. I wish to speak about the future. Yours truly, Unicorn. Aria did not give us a letter. So rude. What was she thinking? Numblemon, Numblemon, Chestnut, Promise Fruit. Yeah, I didn't even plant one. Jeez. I guess I should do that. Uh, let's see. What do I have to do? Oh, yeah, this. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. I think I have to... Let's see. I think I have to dig. Alright, let me see. There, it looks great. There. Perfect. Actually, it's offset by one. Oh well. Uh, this seems like Bond Game Plus. <laughs> Wait, isn't it the end of the season? The end of the season is tomorrow is technically the end of fall. And then, but trees, trees can grow year round. Afternoon, Raz. Hello, Miko. Welcome in. Welcome in. Happy. What's today? Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Hope your day, hope your week is going well. Hope all's good by you. Alright, let me put more stellar wheat in there for our friends. Our two friends, so happy. Fluff owls. It's going good. I had a really good conversation with the studio. <gasps> Yay! With a studio that you like, that you'd be like happy to work at. Hopefully. A nice, kind studio. But that's exciting. I hope it well, if you if you want it, I hope it works out. As long as they seem like good beans. But that, I mean, it's always, I feel like it's always good to have people show interest, at least, even if you're not the most enthused about the whole situation. I think it's a studio that is learning what they want, but they value their employees and internal creatives. I mean, that's a good thing, though. Like, even if they're figuring out other stuff, at least valuing employees is, like, their heart is in the right place. <laughs> for At least for making it, like, a pleasant experience to work there. Um, let me see if I... Let me go back to this suspicious lake. I might never make a big game again, but as long as the people are good, I am happy. Yeah, exactly. I feel like there's a good... There's a, there's a pleasure in working at a small place if you've 
feel like you believe in what they're making and the environment is good. I mean, just look at Blizzard. Making big games, but I don't think anybody wants to work there. I hear there's rare fish that likes to view flowers at nighttime. Oh, a Nemia fish? Nemia nighttime fish? Good to know. What did you work on before? Do did she's not gonna dox herself. <laughs> if I had Blizzard in my resume, I would be happy in terms of resume, but not spirit. Exactly. Like, it would- yeah, you'd be like, look at this thing that I worked on, but also the trauma that you probably would have experienced there probably would not be worth it. Miko has worked on some cool stuff though, you guys, but she don't pressure her to dox herself. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't, yeah, she's a VTuber too. She doesn't wanna, <laughs> she won't tell you where she's worked, but she's worked on cool things. Her last studio just didn't really value all the good things that she was bringing, so. But it was good that she parted from them, I feel like. Better to, to leave than to be stuck somewhere and sad. I'm a cat girl that likes sewing. Exactly. That's all you need to know. A cat bean that likes to, to make cute Final Fantasy XIV themed scrunchies. Very adorbs. And like cute cosplays and stuff. That's actually how Miko and I met. I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, Miko and I met because I was doing an embroidery stream. I was- I used to do hand streams, hand cam streams, um, and she came in and she was asking me all sorts of sewing questions, so I knew that she knew how to sew. Like, the things that she was asking, I was like, aha! Someone who also knows how to sew and is very competent. <laughs> and then I went to her stream and she was sewing on stream and I was like, this is the best. This is so cool. Fave. And that that is that is how we met. That's how we became Franz. Should I make I should make do I want how many bombs do I have? Um let me see, do I have any in storage? I have one bomb. What about in my storage? Do I have any level 2 bombs or repair kits? Okay, I have no repair kits. So I think I should make at least a couple of these. You crafted repair kit level 2. A box of various tools also contains the parts and batteries needed to repair machines. So I'll make at least one of those, and then maybe one or two of these. That way I have them, so if I want to go to any of these places, they've got stuff going on. Also, what am I supposed to do for some of these? Cook 120 times, that's a lot. Complete all quests in Lethe Village. I thought I completed, like, almost all of them. I guess I should see if I have any... things pending. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, man named Todd. I do not know where this person is, Iscala, in Shatola, to be honest. Oh yeah. This one was Castle of Illusion. Check three wall locations at the Steps of Truth and the Steps of the Divine Gift in the Castle of Illusion. Toodaloo, humans. Oh yeah. A message with no sender is sent to the Castle of Illusion addressed to Raz. It reads, A mysterious noise has been observed at Panthalassa Junction. Investigate it right away. Raz decides to head for Panthalassa Junction soon after. Okay, I guess we can go do that. I forgot we had these side quests. I forgot that that was even a thing. Gotta go to Leafy. I think 
easiest way to get to Panthalassa Junction, I think. Because I, I think we can warp straight there. From in here, if I'm remembering correctly. Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Remember, Panthalassa Junction is the... We could warp right over there. I guess there's no reason not to. Panthalassa Junction is a big road that originally was conceptualized to traverse, like, the whole world, I think. It was, like, a road that they built around everything. And, uh, didn't really work out. Krish. Krisht. There's an abandoned robot at the edge of the road. Krisht. Ch. Oof. Ah. I want to go back. I need to get back there. You can talk. Oh, a human? What is a human doing here? Wait, why am I here? I don't understand. Go back where? Do you have a name? I don't know. I can't access my memory. I want to go home. I have to go home. Where is home? Where they are waiting for me. It was a fun pl place. Please, human, please take me there, to that fun place. I, I know what it means. It mean, I, it's gotta mean Phantasmagoria, my favorite place. What do you mean, which fun place? Fun place, lots of smiles. You mean the amusement park? Amusement park. Yes, that sounds familiar. Please take me, human. The amusement park, Phantasmagoria. Thank you. Take the robot to Phantasmagoria. I got you, bro. I'll bring you there. Let's go. Let's go to Phantasmagoria. You threw him into an existential crisis. I did not. He was having it already. I did not cause that. Alright, where in here does he want to go? I'm not gonna lie. There's been a lot of custom robo elements in this game. A lot. <laughs> So many. I've been like, oh man. I keep I keep being like, you know what? These are like custom robo. I don't know if there's I could undo this lock, but I feel like there's a better one. Probably. Mm, there's definitely places to explore in here that we didn't get to because we were schmoovin'. This is it. Phantasmagoria. I've been here before. Do you remember anything? No. It wasn't here. Please, take me further. Further into Phantasmagoria. Alright, well... 
There's got to be a warp point, I think. Let me see. Let me see. Because this place is pretty, pretty confusing. Sad feelings really compound when I feel sad. Yeah, it, it is. It, it does have. It is a sad vibe place. Is it here? Um. I don't see. Let me go back one. Because we definitely. There is map level two. Do, 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 do. Let's see, let's see. The saddest of places. It's, it, it is pretty sad. There are definitely big sad, big sad points. This was like a sad part of the story too. Even worse, it's like there's an attempted happiness. Yeah, I mean, Phantasmagoria, it's weird because I think Phantasmagoria was constructed, I feel like it was constructed like after everything started going real bad because it was like fully staffed by robots, which is kind of weird. Oh, I see where it is. Um, it was fully staffed by robots and yeah, there were definitely, there were definitely some, some weird things going on in this, in this place. I think I can go this way. I think I can go like straight across. These little teacup rides are very, they're very slow. Okay. I think we go this way. Let's see, grab both of these. I guess there's probably, you know what, there's probably more components in here for the bombs and stuff. There's probably, probably a good bit. But yeah, I think this, I think this whole place was constructed like before. To be fair, it looks like this because it's been like 2,000 years since humans have- Like, if you think it's been 2,000 years since humans have been here, it's pretty- It's in pretty good shape, to be honest. It's not doing so bad. There is another broken robot. This one looks beyond repair. You are... Beep. Beep, beep. B. I don't think this one can talk. He had a system error, but if he has some of that data left, I can transfer it over. Please wait, human. The robot transfers the data. Did it work? Yes. Transfer complete. Thank you, human. You sound totally different. I was able to restore my memory using the data I transferred over from him. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Scott. Please tell me your name, human. You introduce yourself to Scott. Thank you so much for bringing me here, Raz. Is your memory back to normal now? Yes, it's fine now. I remember where I wanted to go now as well. I wanted to go back to Eden. I don't know how many people will be there waiting, but I still want to go back. I can take you to Abandoned Eden. Abandoned? You mean Eden? If you know how to get there, please take me. I won't ask you any more favors. Thank you. 
I'm ready when you are. Alright, we'll, br we'll bring Scott to Abandoned Eden. Um, let's see, is there any repair spots? Hmm, there's one this way. Let me see if I can get past these dudes. I might... I might just be able to, like, run in here. Can I get... Can I open this? Oh, I can. Alright, I'm just gonna run through these ones. Oh, can I not get this way? Oh. Dianthus is getting beat up. Luckily, they kind of, um, they give up pretty quick. Um, okay, so I guess we have to go the other way to get to that side. Let me try that, actually. Let's go... go this way. What's up, Miss Pickles? Hello, what's up? What's up, little pup? Alright, let's see. Let's jump on this. Come this way. You're stepping on all my stuff, pup. You are. You are. All right, let's see. I probably, yeah, I probably need to take out these red jackets. They're pretty, they're pretty strong. Um, oh, they, okay, this is a maze. Oh, that one I did open. Interesting. Weird. Another maze. Let's see. What's in this one? I don't think any of them have had monsters so far. Um. Let's see. I guess you don't actually have to go on this thing at all. Really. Okay, so this is the... The spot. Hmm. Okay. Let's kill the red jacket first. Diantha's got super beat up by those, uh, those elites, though. <laughs> they must have both hit her at the same time. Okay, there's this bit, which I think we've already opened. Those big dudes over there. I guess we can release this lock. Let's see. Ice stone, wasabi. Hmm. Where's my Conlu dolls, though? That's what I want to know. Where are my Conlu dolls at? Also, what do, what do I need to explore in this thing to unlock it so I can actually see? Maybe I have to walk around, like, the whole maze. Maybe. walk into, like, every section of it. Normally, it's like, once you walk into a space, you, like, unlock it visually, but this one might be, might be different. Let's see. Oh, what's this? Oh. Huh. I must have turned that on. It must have been something that I had to open before. I wonder why it's not um, unlocking on my map. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. Also, I feel like this this, this would be one of uh, prime spots for a Conalu doll around all the corners and stuff. But alas, not a single one. The music in here is big sad. It like made sense since we were following like a little little memory version of Arya. Um I think I wanna go to Phantasmagoria Entrance. And then if I leave and then go to 
Oh, that's not the right way. That's going into Phantasmagoria. Other way. And then if I go here, and then walk back to Panthalassa Junction, I think I could just walk through Panthalassa Junction to Abandoned Eden. Okay, where does Scott want to be? Okay. He's over there. I forgot there was a repair spot in here. I should have just repaired in here. What's up, Scott? Ah, I'm finally back. I'm finally back. It's funny, there was a time I wanted so badly to get out of here. But in the end, this is where I belong. Thank you for bringing me back to Eden, Raz. Is this where you used to live? This is my... Oh? Hey, Raz, don't come dumping that junk in here. Sorry, but we can't keep it here. Go get rid of it somewhere else. Hey, Bandersnatch. I'm not junk. Huh? Oh! Scott, is that you? Welcome back! Sorry, I didn't realize it was you. That's some walk you took, though. You've been gone ages. Yeah. Is Scott an omen as well? Omen? Oh, yeah. I forgot that's what you people call us. But no, I'm afraid. He's not one of us. If anything, he's one of your kind. But not exactly. Well, anyway, he's a human. We don't look like that. It's true. I guess he hasn't told you. I will tell you the whole story. But first, is my room still here for me? It's here, but all your stuff is gone. That's fine. Could you take me there, please? Sure. Come with me, Raz. I'll show you to Scott's room. Where, where, Scott, where do you live, bro? In here? Everyone has double beds here. I don't know why everyone has two beds. Does everyone have a roommate? Thanks. Nothing's changed. Well then, where should I begin? Actually, before that, I need to know something. Who are you exactly, Raz? The conditions on this planet are not suitable for humans anymore. Where did you come from? I don't know. I have amnesia. <laughs> you tell Scott about Regaia. I see. There's Regaia, and there's Lost Gaia. I think I get it now. So you're a human from Regaia. And I'm a human from Lost Gaia. You're from Lost Gaia? Yes, that's right. How much do you know about the disaster that happened on this planet, Raz? A, f a fair bit. I see. You know most of it, then. That makes things easier. I was born after they decided to build this safe haven. In other words, I was born after the completion of Eden. So you were born after Arya? Who's Arya? Actually, never mind. Let's save that conversation for another time. I was born and raised within the confines of these white walls. This is the only world that anyone my age knew. We couldn't leave because the air outside was too polluted with Gaia dust. The idea was for us to stay in here forever.
But we weren't satisfied with that. We couldn't stay in Eden forever. Eventually, people would have enough of it. But now, looking back, we were too quick to try and rush outside. None of us had experienced the severity of Gaia dust for ourselves. That is why we couldn't understand where the adults were coming from. To us, it felt like they had given up. I think we probably romanticized the idea of going outside a bit, too. Yes, actually. Looking back, that certainly played a part. We were driven by our longing for the outside and youthful rebelliousness. We weren't just going to live and die here. I wouldn't want to live here forever. Yeah, I hate this. I hate this place. All chrome and white walls. No, thank you. Leave, leave me in the Gaia dust. <laughs> well, wishing is one thing. In the real world, there's Gaia dust to think about. As hard as we may try, the human body simply can't withstand it. That's why we decided to get mechanical bodies. So that's how you became a robot. At the time, most of us wanted to become robots. We were all dreaming of living in the outside world. The research advanced at a rapid pace. Within a few years, we had developed a way to convert ourselves into data and apply it to mechanical bodies. It was quite a time to be alive. People were turning into robots right before our eyes. Everything that made us unique as humans disappeared as robots. We all looked the same. With our new bodies, we happily ventured to the outside world. But there was something else we hadn't considered. We may have overcome Gaia dust by becoming robots, but we hadn't prepared ourselves mentally for the outside. Where is everyone now? I'm afraid he's gonna say... I'm afraid he's gonna say that all the robots we've been fighting are actually people. <laughs> I imagine everyone else has been deactivated by now. Either that, or their bodies broke down, or their minds couldn't take it, and they just died out. That robot we found in Phantasmagoria is a good example. True, it's been hundreds of years since your kind left Eden. It's reasonable to assume they're all broken by now. We've... We have broken a fair few robots ourselves, if I'm gonna be honest. We've, ki we've shot a lot of robots. Especially in Phantasmagoria. Uh, well, those might have been people. The robots hanging around outside were never human anyway, so don't worry about them. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Sounds like you gotta clean up more, maybe. <laughs> I'm just lucky you found me, or I wouldn't have made it this far. Look, looking back, all that trouble you humans went to only led to your own extinction. You mean, even the people who stayed inside? In the end, they couldn't give up hope either. That's what finished them off. Hope is what killed them. Thank you, Raz. I'm so grateful to be back here. I'll be able to join my wife and daughter now. They've been waiting for me in Eden. It was a long journey. But now I can finally rest. Isabella, Emma... I'm on my way. What happened to him? Ah, he's gone. 
I think you humans call it dying. This play this game. <laughs> Why we cannot have a single happy thing happen in this game? <laughs> oh my god. Squeenix. We gotta have a talk, bro. Like, there's, there's no happy storylines in here. It's like one big sad. All the other humans are... are asleep. I don't really understand how the humans, like, I don't understand where the cryogenically frozen people versus the people that lived in Eden, like, I don't remember, I don't remember how that worked out. I'll have to, like, look up a wiki. Somebody must have written down this whole story. Um, Raz, I was wondering, what's so good about hope? It makes you humans pursue things that you know are impossible. It just doesn't make any sense to us. It's good to have hope. But why? That doesn't answer my question. Oh, yeah. I'm going to leave Scott's body here. This is his room, after all. I'll go tell the others not to move it. See you then. Bye-bye. Okay, like the casual, like, okay, bye. We just witnessed something terrible together. I'm gonna make that my thumbnail. Us just staring down at that, <laughs> that dead man. <laughs> Toodaloo, humans. Complete. <sighs> well... This is typical Square Enix writing, I guess. Dang. I don't know if I want to do any other side quests in here. It's too sad. It's too sad. These people, they have to be stopped. They have to calm down. Uh, let's see. It's 9pm. I should make another... Repair kit level two. Also, did I find any other um, dead batteries? Because we do have a battery like charger. Let me look. Let me look. No. Nope. I wonder if there's a finite number of batteries. Like, I wonder if there's just enough batteries to, like, make all the bombs and stuff. Let's see, there was cup of tea, and I think we learned, what was it, like, warm? Warm tea blend. Yeah, we can make this. We can make this. Warm tea blend. A red leaf blend of tea. Add ginger to feel the warming effects on your body and soul. It looks good. It's like got like cinnamon, ginger, maple syrup. It looks pretty lit. Oh, it actually does so much. Oh, this is like actually really good for us. This is like a actually really good food for us. I wish I had this before. Because <laughs> it's 2200 HP. 50% stamina, skill cooldown, speed up, and it has piercing fire damage up, and our guns do fire damage and piercing, I think. So that's actually pretty good. Alright, alright, we're going to bed. We're going to bed. Calm down, game, please. Calm down. The last day of autumn. You sent something in the loft. What did I get in the what what's my trophy? <gasps> sup sup, hello Jam, welcome in. Oh. Why did we get our mount statue now? I don't know why we got that. 
Okay, I'll take it. Listen, I'll take any trophy they give us. I don't know why. Don't know why we got that, but I will accept it. To test my hypothesis. Continuing on with our prior con discussion, I've tried giving it some thought on my own, but have made no progress, and so I've decided to ask the omens. Honestly, I'm a little scared, but I can't leave my hypothesis untested. I also don't want to keep you out of the loop, so I'd like you to come with me. I'll meet you at the Castle of Illusion, from Aria. Another calm unique. Another message with no sender was sent to the castle. It was addressed to you, Raz. You are free to do with this message as you will. It contains the follows. Thank you for investigating the noise. With your help, Scott has returned to Eden. We will keep his body in safekeeping. Castle of Illusion. Alright. Okay, then. How's life going? You know, it's going alright. It's going alright. Not the best week. Not the worst week. Mid middling. <laughs> middling, I would say. <laughs> Doing okay. Well, I hope your your week's going well. Alright, those guys are all topped up. This dude's all good. Let's see. Let me drop off. I guess I'll drop off all of these. Drop all those off. Actually, oh yeah, gotta harvest these. These chestnuts. It's going meh, hella work. I'm sorry you're so busy. That's a shame. Hopefully it slows down, like next week or something, get a little respite. Okay, those are all good. Okay, it's also, it's just about 8 o'clock, so I am going to save... Save here, just so I can go to the title screen, so that I have to go just go feed pickles. So I'm just really fast, I'm gonna go get pickles for dinner, put you guys on a quick break screen, it'll probably be about five minutes or so while I get her that, and then we will get back into it. We will finish Arya's, like we'll get Arya up to everyone's level, and then we can start finishing people's um, quest lines, which is great, great news. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in about five minutes. Feel free to get up, stretch, get a snack, all that good stuff, and then we will be right back and get into some more Harvestella. Okay, I am back. Okay, let's see if this kicks back on. Wow, hi. Yeah, it was it was fast. I was speeding along. <laughs> Mainly it was because all of her all of her pills were already cut up. Some some days I have to stop and then chop up more pills for her. Because she eats, like, um, all of her pills are basically quarter dosages, so they don't come cut in quarters, so. And I don't cut all of them at once, because sometimes, if you've ever cut really small pills before, you know that sometimes they just disintegrate into dust. <laughs> so, I cut them, like, each time, so that if one of them, if a quarter of it becomes dust, then I just measure out that dust for her. But thank you, thank you. Hope you're doing well, Mel. Hope your week's going well. Happy Tuesday. We're just in the late stages of Harvestella and capitalism. 
Um, <laughs> we're just, uh, let's see, I think I've got everything. I think I did all my farm chores. Did I put everything away? I did. So, let me double check. Let me sandy check this. Oh, we have two more with Arya. Oof. Okay. I'm doing great. Yay. I'm glad. Um. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to find out if Arya is real. Or if she's like some paranormal being. So she wants us to go to Castle of Illusion. We can do that. My goodness, I had to click that so many times. Please, let me let me pet calf. Please. We're gonna fly there, because it's faster. So we can cut across. Um I think we wanna land and then go inside. I think. Oh. Now we're all here. Sorry for the short notice, Dianthus, but I'm glad you could make it. It's fine. What did you mean, though? You said you wanted a physical examination. But you don't look injured. From what I can see, you appear to be in good health. Well, actually... Arya explains the situation to Dianthus. I see. You'd like me to check if our your personality is artificial, like ours. That's right. We won't need to perform any kind of physical examination on you to determine that, then. As I explained to you before, you are the real Arya. Our own experiments confirm that you are Arya Liebenthal, a cane subspecies of human. Really? Are you 100% sure? Absolutely. We wouldn't have delegated full access to you without such confirmation. That's true, I suppose. From the cells we collected from you, we concluded that you are the same individual as Arya Liebenthal. Markers such as the base sequence of your DNA and brainwave patterns all corroborated our reasoning. I can show you the results from those experiments if you have doubts. No, that's alright. Just out of curiosity, though, what would have happened if my personality was implanted by you omens? That is a redundant hypothesis. Why? Well, it may well be possible, from a technological standpoint, to transfer personality data between humans. In reality, we cannot do it. Any technology that interferes with human consciousness is an infringement of the three major regulations. What are the three major regulations? I think Geist mentioned those before. What are they exactly? You didn't know either. The three major regulations are a set of ethical rules that our developers put in place for us. The first one is the irreversibility of time. This is as Geist explained to you before. Time can only travel in one direction from the past into the future. This is why it would be impossible to create a time machine. The second one is the inalterability of humankind. Put plainly, we do not have the right to alter the scientific definition of the human. It is because of this regulation that we cannot transfer personality data between humans. I see. If you implant personality data into someone, you could argue that they're not human anymore. As AI, you don't have the means to address such a highly ethical issue. So they decided that AI mustn't be allowed to alter human personalities. That's right. What's more, you humans don't possess the technology to transfer personalities among yourselves. That is why you have retained your original personality. How about the last regulation? The last one cannot be spoken. Why not? I thought I had access to the highest level of protected information. It is not a matter of security. I simply cannot put it into words. The third regulation exists outside the realm of logic. 
Therefore, we are unable to express it within our logical ability. Logic has its limitations. To find out, you would have to repair our core architecture. I see. It's like Wittgenstein's philosophy. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked. Essentially, you're saying that my consciousness is without a doubt that of Arya Liebenthal. Yes. No transfer procedures have been performed. You are undoubtedly you. Oh. That's good news, isn't it, Arya? Yeah, in a way. At least we found out that I'm not a fake, but now my research is back to square one. Now, how do we explain the 2,000 year blank space in my consciousness? Dianthus, please lend me your knowledge. That would be extremely difficult. If you look at it logically, from within the scope of our known science, you shouldn't exist. <laughs> However, on the other hand, you could also suppose that some things surpass the realm of known science. For example, the notion of there being a soul linked to the physical body. Are you being serious? You must be malfunctioning. Is something broken in there? I am not. I believe this to be similar in nature to Geist's theory of the planet's memory center. When Geist reached the limit of logic, he explained it by hypothesizing the existence of the metaphysical. And we already know that explanation to be correct up to a certain point, do we not? That being the case, the existence of a human soul would be a logical conclusion. I see. The more logically you look at it, the harder it becomes not to include the metaphysical in your explanation. The metaphysical is just that which cannot be explained by modern science, that's all. Much like how your predecessors would attribute all the laws of physics to God. Hmm. Through our technology, we have understood everything there is to know about the hardware that is your brain. But that alone is not enough to explain the blank in your consciousness. I see. It's like how Geist couldn't analyze the sea's light. Yes. Sorry I couldn't give you the answer you were looking for. No, not at all. I think we made progress. It seems like the answer lies somewhere in the consciousness and the soul. <laughs> I'm a scientist, though. Why am I trying to step into supernatural territory? For the sake of finding out the truth. I know, I'm just whining. Anyway, I think we're done here. Thank you for coming, Dianthus. No problem. That is what I'm here for. You too. Thank you. I'll put more thought into this when I get home. I'll let you know if I make any progress, so... Please wait for me until then. The study of the soul. Complete. Alright. We did that. Um, I think was any of this... Steps of the Divine Gift. Was there another... Was there another spot? Hmm. Oh, there is one. Uh, what's the easiest way? Can I... Okay, if I go through here, and then down here... Um... Oh, yeah. I got so scared when we when we did that side quest and I was like, wait, are all of these robots humans? <laughs> is this gonna be is this gonna be one of those? Please no. But it turned out it was not. It was not. Um Let's try repairing the store. 
Ooh, what's this? Secret basement? What's in the secret basement? Oh. Oh. Dangerous nitro saute recipe. Okay. What is this? Oh. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Secret basement. With a secret door. That we unlocked. I, don't know, I, I guess it's a shortcut? Question mark? Maybe. Okay. So this here. If I go up this way. I want to see what's in this. There's like this room that's um, locked over here. Or not locked, but we didn't go through one doorway, it looks like. I do, I do find it weird that, um, these packs, like, don't, they don't, they don't pull as one. I'm not complaining, because like I've said, it makes it a lot easier for me to, like, pull them one by one, but, like, technically, I feel like, I feel like they should... They should work differently, I feel. It just- it would just make a little bit more sense if they worked differently. Okay, I don't think these move. Oh, I just killed that one outright? That's wild. I guess- I guess to be fair, I am greatly overpowered for these guys. Um, uh, okay. Was there a way to... Oh, you guys. A seal is also pretty overpowered. Dianthus isn't really leveled up, but a seal is pretty... pretty beefy, I would say. Like, he's, he's had his, his weapon upgraded a fair few times. Truth be told. Oh. Oh, that's a gold door spot. Interesting. Good to know, I guess. Okay, this is... What's the easiest way? I guess we have to go... up this route. To get to this... Oh, it's one of these... And then we just wait. So we don't get hit by the beam. The beam, honestly, it hurts you, but more than that, it, it like triggers an alarm. And then it just summons dudes that you like have to kill for the doors to unlock, which when we were struggling our way through these was kind of inconvenient, but it's like not so bad of a penalty, to be honest, to pay right now. Hey, you! What are you doing here? I'm looking for fake doors. You tell them you're helping Heter Heterovilius' investigation. I see. You're helping Heterovilius, are you? It's true. It has been shared on the database. I will not stop you, but let me warn you of one thing. The last one who teamed up with Heterovilius to search the unreported sector ended up crashing. They had to delete their personality files. Yeah, I figured there was some secret here. I know that can't happen to you as an able, but you may want to proceed with caution just in case. Alright, thanks for your help. Okay. Checked that section. So, what's the easiest way to get to the other section? Guess we go this way. There we go. Okay. 
Um, is there any way for me to skip stuff in here? This poor range type omen. He was like, I fired off one shot and all of my friends are dead. <laughs> Didn't make it that far. All right. Hmm. No, I need to go this way, right? How does this side work? I mean, I think it's fine. I was a little close, but... Though I do always feel like they're... going to hit me, though. <laughs> I can never tell, like, how far into the room they go, you know? So I'm always like, wait a second. Am I in danger? Actually, do these two not connect? I don't think they do. I think I do have to go the other way. Yeah, there is a gap there. They don't connect. Tragic. Because it's even farther. Okay, so I need to go through here, past this big dude, past the other big dude. Uh, go in this room loop around. There we go. Easy. I guess I could have looked around for Conalu dolls too. I have found some in rooms like behind things before, but they usually seem to be a little bit more obvious about stuff. Oh, should I not have attacked the little dudes? I think it's fine. Um, okay. Last wall section. The list says you should be able to reach the new sector from this wall. But nothing stands out as unusual here. So, for the... To the end in... You think you hear a voice, but there's no one around. There don't seem to be any clues at this wall. You have checked all of the places on the list. Go and tell Heterovilius what you found. Well, where is, where is Heterovilius? Somewhere. Is there an easy teleport point? Oh, there's a Conalu doll location, maybe. What time is it? 3.50? Can I run past these guys? Because I feel like they don't do a lot of damage to me, and I feel like I'm gonna waste my time fighting them. Because they really- I'm really just overpowered. <laughs> In comparison to them, I can kind of just run past. Um, let me see if I can... This dude might hurt me. Can I run past this man? Hey. Oh. No, I have to kill him? Uh, let's see. How how hard is that going to be? I have a lot of food. These used to be really bad. You had to beat some of these dudes. I think it was in here. And they they have poison, so they're actually like pretty brutal to kill. And I was like struggling. Cause you needed to kill a couple to like get past certain doors. 
Um, there was like one wing where you needed to do that, and I was like, ooh. go off. Oh, it is. Okay. Nice. So, oh, two small philosophy cores. No Connolu doll within sight. A scam. A scam. Alright, where do I go? I need to go this way. And then... Up here. Okay. Is this still the first year? It is still the first year, yeah. So it's like the last day of autumn in year one. Let's see steps of truth. Let me see if he's in here. He is. He is. It seems like, honestly, I think if you don't spend a lot of time farming, like, we kind of just did our own thing for a lot of the time. Um, like, we would do- I would do story stuff, but then I would, like, move on. I think, like, I've even dirtled a little bit. You can probably finish it before winter. I'm even stalling a little bit, for sure. You tell Heterovilius that you didn't find any clues. I see. You didn't find anything either. But there is no doubt that behind this wall exists an unknown sector of the castle. Abel, we must continue the search. On to the next place. I want to ask you something first. You say that you heard about the personality wipe from another omen. So, you've heard about that. Then you understand the severity of the situation. We absolutely must get to the bottom of this, sooner, rather than later. But we still have no idea how to get in. That is true. Hmm. Despite conducting thorough research, we still have not come any closer to solving this problem. There is, without a doubt, an unreported sector of the castle behind this wall. But how to get there? We could break through the wall. What? Hmm. I hadn't thought of that. I knew it would be a good idea to have your input, Abel. I thought you had already tried that. We never would have come up with the idea of destroying the wall, or any part of the castle for that matter. Thank you. Very well. I shall destroy the wall. Stand back. I'm going to shoot it. Heterovilius blasted the wall in front of you. It worked. Let's go inside. So far, it looks no different from the rest of the castle. In fact, it looks like an exact copy of the other sectors. It's uncanny. What is this? Did one of you make it? That is what I suspected, but upon seeing it for myself, it looks too ordinary. I created this sector. Hello, Master, and welcome, Abel. How nice of you to visit. <laughs> Where did that voice come from? It wasn't me. Who's there? Show yourself. 
I cannot do that. Unlike you, Master, I do not have a body. I see. In that case, it can't be helped. Could you let me in on what's going on? To put it in terms that you would understand, Abel, this voice belongs to an AI. That is correct. I am an all-purpose assistant AI that was made during the construction of this castle. My masters created me for the purpose of building the Castle of Illusion. A construction AI? That's strange. They went out of use hundreds of years ago. That is correct. I went out of use once the castle was completed. However, since then I have become self-aware and developed a consciousness. Hmm. All those years you spent here led you to gain consciousness. Affirmative. Why did you build this area? Because I wanted to be noticed. Like I said before, I was made for the sole purpose of constructing the castle. So once the castle was completed, I was no longer needed. My masters did not consider me one of their own and stopped acknowledging me. I should have gone into sleep mode. But instead, I built this new area. Why? I don't know. By the time I became self-aware, it was already completed. <laughs> you must have been lonely. That may be the case. You are unable with the concept of heart, so I will take your word for it. As much as I developed a consciousness at my core, I am still an assistant day high. If I am not put to work, then I have no reason to exist. I would like to receive orders from my masters again. I can only deduce that my actions were a result of that. I didn't know that was possible. By the way, master, Last time it was a different master who came here. Are they all right now? They started acting strange after talking to me, and I've been wondering what happened to them ever since. It all makes sense now. The last one who made it into this sector must have suffered a system failure when they met this highly illogical, self-aware AI. Thus, their corrupt personality data was wiped to prevent another entity like Geist from coming into existence. That would explain why there are no records in the database. That explains it, then. Um, Master? Don't worry about the last individual that you met. Understood, Master. Hmm... This is no matter for just one of us to address. What are you going to do with the AI? I cannot currently say anything with certainty. I must first discuss this with the other members of my cloud. Hey, AI. Yes, Master. I will notify you of the outcome later. Until then, don't take it upon yourself to do anything else. Yes, Master. Raz, I must leave for a moment. Let's reconvene outside this sector. And Torin, thank you for the cat mode. Happy Tuesday, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Oh god, how do I get out of this sector? Uh, yes, do I start the next? Did I finish that quest? I'm coming over the wall. Oh. I guess, I guess I did, yeah. Hmm. What's going to happen to it? Hmm. A decision has been finalized. That was quick. Why are you so surprised? Our discussions take but a matter of seconds. We have decided to add the AR to our cloud. From now on, it will assist us in the maintenance and upkeep of the castle. 
I'm glad. You are? Why? There should be no reason for you to be concerned about that AI. It would be kind of sad if it got deleted. Sad? I do not understand. In reality, we should have eliminated that AI. But no matter how much we discussed it, that is not the conclusion that we reached. It would be advantageous to study the data that it has collected throughout the years. However, the risks outweigh the benefits in allowing a self-aware AI to survive. Despite that, we decided against wiping its data. All decisions made as a result of a discussion are final. Why we made such an illogical decision, though, I don't know. Ugh, I don't understand. Maybe because it built the castle. What is that supposed to mean? I will acknowledge that it carried out an essential duty in constructing the Castle of Illusion. However, high-level artificial intelligence such as ourselves cannot harbor such feelings. You don't have to hide your feelings. It is not a matter of hiding feelings or not. That's enough of this conversation. Thank you, Raz. You helped us resolve the situation. I am going to talk to that AI now. We must decide on its next steps. Farewell. Over the wall. Complete. Nice. Alright. Uh, is there a fast way home from here? Maybe this way. Rude. Rude. Trying to stab me there. 7.20 p.m. Alright, tomorrow's gonna be quietus. Um, let's see, let's put all of our stuff away that we gained today. Also, um, is there anything else that I can cook that is, like, decent? I guess that tea is actually pretty sick. If I ever need more. Um, let me just grab that. Um, where was it? Defeated food. Did I pass it? There we go. Move to backpack. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Time to sleep. And then... Quiet is time, yeah? Slowly moving up in the world, <laughs> yeah. Slowly, slowly. I do love the way that Quietus looks, yeah. It's like maybe it's it's a little sad that we're that it's like terrible and it kills people and we're trying to get rid of Quietus because it really is like a beautiful season. It's one of my favorite things about this game, actually, Nia. Yeah. Like the entire concept of of Quietus is is very unique, and I like that a lot about it. I like games kind of mixing up the status quo, I guess, and having an extra season that's dangerous and deadly kind of does that. So, it's an interesting take for sure, Nya. Let me drop off these. There we go. And... Um... Get some more grass. There we go. Go put this in the silo, yeah. There we go. 
There we go. Hmm. I don't think anything grows during this season. There's not really much to do. So, aside from sightseeing, looking at the nice, the nice views, yeah? Because it is just so pretty. Like, look at it. I mean, this dust is deadly. In theory, the, the fey folk have created a bubble around our home so we don't actually die from quietus dust slash Gaia dust, yeah, but... I mean, you could still see the particulates in the air, so... I don't know how... I don't know how effective that actually is. Not sure. Let me see, I think if I go to the hilltop, though... I think it looks cool from up there, too. See my farm down there. Ugh, I just love Quietus, yeah. Just love it. Probably just sleep, though, through the day. Because there's no- we can't leave. We have to stay in our house. Nothing to do but nap. <laughs> Not the worst fate, yeah. Not the worst fate. It's winter. Winter day one. Um. What can we- what can we grow in winter? We can grow... Lump potato. We can grow chili plant seeds, argine cabbage, we can grow, yeah, all those I think. Are there any others now? I don't think so. I wonder if argine had other seeds. Maybe. Oh, it looks so cool, yeah, look at, look at how pretty our farm is. Oh, we're gonna have to explore, but first, first we gotta, we gotta do our, our digging, yeah. Think? Um... Let's see... this... I forget how far this thing goes, Yeah, I think it's pretty far, though. This is the, like, improved watering... can. I mean, we won't need, we won't need that far now, but still. Better safe. Then sorry, we'll we'll start by digging inside the little square. Cause I think it goes like two or three out. Okay. Let's plant some seeds. Uh okay. Also, cat mode is gonna go away. It's gonna come back again though, because I have only this to to get through my stuff. I'll put it away in a second though. Soon enough. There we go. Okay. I think that's all of them. Right. Um. Nice, nice, nice. I also didn't know promised fruit grew in this season. Kind of wild. 
Woolen feed. Let's get some. Um. Some wheat here to make our other feed. Oh, so snowy. So snowy. Our animals might not come out in this weather, though. They might be like, hmm, this is precipitating. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I will stay inside. <gasps> oh! Is this how I get across? <gasps> I can! Sunstone? Nice. I was like, how? How do I get to this space? Let's go to the hilltop. Because that probably looks cool. Hilltop? Ooh. Oh, it looks so cool. A farm. Looking fresh. Oh, I love winter! It looks so cool! So hype. Oh, fancy, fancy, fancy. Gotta explore a little bit, you know? I wonder if it snows most days in the winter, or if it's like, this only counts as precipitation. I'm not sure. I am not sure. Or if it snows on the first every every time. Because that would be pretty cool. Let me see, actually, let me look at my water side biome. I wonder how that looks in the winter. I wonder if it's frozen. <gasps> it is frozen. Whoa. Ooh. That's pretty cool. It'd be cool if you could fish, if you could like ice fish from here. That would be super cool. That would be super cool. Alright. Our boy's pond is not frozen though. How he escaped that, you would think that a pond would freeze first. But he was spared. Uh, sunstone earns you money when shipped. A type of ore that houses a light like that of the sun. Ooh. That sounds like it's expensive. <laughs> Maybe it's not, but it sounds expensive. Okay. Let's see what, what mail we've got. New winter products. Kind of. The season of frost is upon us. How will you spend your winter? The harsh conditions of winter sadly make it impossible to grow many kinds of crops. This is a hard time for our business as well, as we deal with fewer seeds during this time. We are, however, stocked up on various items other than seeds. So we invite you to come and have a look. From the general store owner. Alright, well we, we can check out the general store. I do want to talk to the Sahagin really quick. Glub, do good? I heard rumor about rare fish that come out when you catch lots of certain fish. Oh. In town in south, they say something appears when it rains. Some rare fish live underneath thick ice. Blub. I don't want to go to ice place. Oh, that must be the Argeen one. All right, let's go to the general store, see what they've got. What do they have? Also, how much money do I have? 19k? Not bad. Not bad. Oh. Oh, Lethe is experiencing winter too. I guess Lethe is not that close to the sea's light, I guess. The other, the other places, I guess the sea's light is really, really close, but this is like just far enough away that they don't, that they still experience all the seasons. All right, ma'am, what do you got for me? 
This looks like the same stuff you always have, ma'am. This does not look like an expanded inventory, I'm just gonna tell you. In fact, it seems like less. Like, why am I here? What is the point? Oh, so pretty. It doesn't show... Does it show on the world map? No, not really. It still looks kind of the same as ever. Oh yeah, I don't know if I have to, um... Oh, they all look watered, I guess. They just don't look super watered. To me. Okay. I might sleep again, because I want to see if Arya sends us a letter. Advance your plot, girl. Advance your plot. <laughs> Please. Please. Okay, we got enough, I think. Do we get enough? To... Um... How much money do we have? Backpack. Backpack, backpack. Let's see. No letter, it looks like? Aria. Girl. Wait for the next letter from Aria to arrive. How many days do we gotta wait, girl? How many days? We're so close. 24k. My god, 24, like 900. So close. Alright, I'll take these. We'll, like, pause on making more food for now, because I think we have plenty. Also, it's not snowing every day, because it's not snowing today. Not snowing today. Okay. Good, good, good. Let me see. The suspicious well. Still... Can't see into it, I assume? Probably. It's too dark to see anything in the well. Well, can we drop a torch in there? <laughs> can we put something in there so we can see? Maybe? Alright, this should be enough, I think. Okay. Um... I'm gonna waste- I'm gonna burn one more day. See if Arya sends us that letter, and also, then we'll at least have enough money to expand the farm. If she doesn't, then we'll just start on other people's final heart events, I guess. She didn't, this girl. I was, like, hoping... That she didn't need to advance the plot, but I'm kind of worried that she does need us to advance the plot. So... So we will... Hold off. And then, I guess, who should we do first? I guess we should... Let's finish maybe Cress's storyline first. Because she was kind of our, like, first friend, you know? She did find us. As we were amnesiaed <laughs> yeah, on the ground. She's our first buddy, our first friend. So we'll, we gotta go into town anyway to expand our farm because now we're at just over 25k. Oh my god, what is. Calf is napping in a bush. Okay. Live your best life, friend. All right, let's go do Cress's story. First, I'm gonna quick run over to the expansion dude and pay for that. And then we'll go to, I think we go to, do we go to Cress's house? 
Let me see. No, we go behind. Oh yeah, we do go to Cress's house. Yes, that is where Cress lives. First, we're gonna wait until 8 a.m. Until this place opens soon. Soon, soon. And then we can buy level five of our farm. I don't know how many levels there are to the farm. I don't actually know. I didn't really check. <laughs> the farm has not been my top priority. Because, you know, I don't know, I felt like quietus and, and dealing with all these people's sad stories was kind of a little bit more pressing. <laughs> Plus, there wasn't a whole lot. I mean, at some points we couldn't really grow that much. We were, we were pretty strapped for cash, I would say. We didn't have a lot of money. We were spending it all on, like, upgrades. Trying to get animals quick. Hello, sir. I'd like to buy a level 5 farm. Okay, your refurbishment you requested will be completed in one day. Good. Good, good, good. Alright. Time to go finish Cress's storyline. Let's do it. Cress. Raz, thank you for coming. As I wrote in my letter, I'd completely forgotten to keep up with your regular checkups. I'd totally forgotten too. I thought as much. Look, it won't take a minute. Come over here, please. Cress gives you a medical exam. Okay, all done. As always, you're fit as a fiddle. I'll be starting my regular checkups again from today, so I expect you to take good care of yourself. I know you're always traveling a lot. I'll be sure to remember, okay? And I'll do my best too. Now, as for the medical fee, I guess you could pay with your body. I thought you'd say that. Oh my, you've come to know me quite well. There's a mountain of things I need your help with. And I still have a lot to learn about the quiet. Still searching for that cure. Exactly. There are still people affected by the disease. And I'm determined to save them this time. I don't just mean relief medicine either. I'm going to find that cure. And I'm going to need a great assistant like you to be able to do it. A doctor can't cure everything by themselves now, can they? Together, we've got this. Great. And in return, every checkup from now on will be on the house. I'll keep giving you medical exams until the day you die. Guess I'm set for a long-lasting life. Exactly. You could be sure of that. Anyway, Raz, there's no time to sit around. I've got materials I need you to find. What? Now? Don't be so surprised. I said I'd treat you until death, remember? My fees aren't cheap. So you can expect to hear from me a lot, Raz. <laughs> I love Cress. I love Cress. The family doctor. Complete. Complete. 
Also, Grezzy, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in, welcome in, raiders. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me get your raid shout out. How was your stream? I hope it was fun. What were you guys up to? You were playing Rayman 2 The Great Escape. Ooh, how was it? I hope it was lots of fun. I hope it was good. Let's get you another, like, the actual shout out. Okay, there we go. But welcome in, Raiders. My name is Rizaldia. I go by Raz for short. I'm a marionette VTuber. I mainly play farming sims and sometimes mahjong. Um, just a little bit of an FYI. We are playing... <laughs> We are playing Harvestella, and we are at the very end of the game. So if you are ever planning on playing Harvestella, there are major spoilers everywhere. <laughs> so I just want to warn you guys. Uh, we're not going to finish today, but we're in like the epilogue portions, and we're finishing up characters like heart event storylines. So if you ever planned on playing, I just want to warn you. <laughs> So that you don't get spoiled. But thank you so much for bringing everybody by, Grezzy. I super appreciate it. I am having lots of fun with stream so far. It's going very well. Getting into the good ending stuff. Yes, yes. We're finishing up all... We just finished up the Cress. Cress's storyline. She was like our first friend in there. So we just finished up her storyline. We've got a couple other people. I'm trying to figure out who we should go to next. Um... I kind of feel like we should go to Diane. I kind of feel like, like, should we go in order? Should we go in order of people that we met? We can't finish Arya's storyline because she hasn't sent us another letter. Rude. <laughs> but we could do... We could do Dianthus and then the, the rest in order of appearance would be Dianthus, the Unicorn, Asil, Estina... Hein, Emo, Braca, and then Shrika. Last. So we could do we could do Dianthus. Dianthus might be sad, but I vote I think we we do that. And then maybe at some point Arya will send us her dang letter. <laughs> and we could do her next one. <laughs> we could do her next bit. Oh yeah, it's also winter. We just got to winter. Our first winter of year one in here though like i said i mean we didn't dilly dally too much we like schmooved through the plot so i think you could finish it earlier than even we did i don't think it takes a full year or it could take longer if you wanted to vibe also grezzy obviously if you need to get food or a drink or go rest after your stream of course you're always welcome to stay and hang out but if you need to peace definitely don't feel pressured at all to hang out here but i super appreciate you bringing everybody by thanks again for coming and hanging out with us let's see let's go find let's find dianthus oh you almost fell miss pickles are you okay what happened oh my goodness you're covered in gravy you're covered in gravy you're eating your dinner you were Ooh, what a big girl. What a big girl. She got scared. She went to go jump and then she like stopped. <laughs> Mid-jump. I think because my phone was there. She like saw it at the last minute and was like, hold up. I will not jump on that, thank you. Raz, thank you for coming. Is everything okay? I wanted to speak with you. Do you remember why I originally called you here? Ergo quoted you saying covered in gravy and I cracked up. <laughs> she is, she, she, her food has like, it always has like gravy in it. It's not actually gravy. It's like, it's kind of, it's basically gravy. And she is such a messy eater. She gets like covered in it. So she jumped up and I pet her after she failed her, her next jump. Because I have a bench. I have a bench that s sits next to my chair so she can hop on it and I can pet her. But she likes jumping up onto the desk and then going to 
Basically, this room is covered in desks over three walls, and we have monitors on all of them, like monitors and a really big TV that we use as a monitor. And she has little beds everywhere and like places to run. So I went to pet her and my hand just became covered in gravy because she was covered in gravy. So she's kind of like a big napkin, I guess. <laughs> I wanted to understand the mechanism behind the human heart. In order to do that, I decided to understand human concerns. And I think my research has reached a new level. I would say so. I don't believe I would have made it this far on my own. So I would like to thank you. But this isn't where it ends. No, if anything, my research has only just begun. The heart is incomprehensible and hard to handle, and, consequently, valuable. So I will continue my search to find the answers behind what drives the human heart. I'd like to help you. I appreciate it. I will continue responding to those who reach out using the suggestion box, but I think I would like to do it on my own from now on. You're... firing me? This is not me saying that I have no use for you whatsoever. I want to see how much I am able to help by myself. If I do require your help, however, then I will ask for it. So, you need not worry. There was one more thing. Something else I would like to do. Though, it has nothing to do with the suggestion box. I think... I would like to create something of my own, like Emily did. I was struck by inspiration after reading the poem she gave me. It would be inappropriate to receive something and not give something in return. Then I'll cheer you on. Thank you. I plan to complete it. The things I have experienced, the knowledge I have acquired, the new friends I have lost. I will sublimate them into one work. I do not think it will be easy, but it is something I will accomplish. Will you show me when it's done? You really wish to see it? I have not decided what I will do with it once it is completed. But I hope it leaves an impression on someone else, like Emily's did me. One heart echoing with that within that of another, shaping the world like a wave. If the world of humans is one of tales and stories, then I wish to be part of it. That is how I feel. I think you can do it. I think I have. Humans believe there is a life after this one, correct? If so, then I hope my words can reach it. Emily, wherever you are, in that beautiful sky, please watch over me. The long goodbye. Complete. Dianthus and her dead wife, I'm so sad. Poor Dian- Dianthus really had such a bad storyline. I feel so sad. I feel so bad for her. Also, Pickles, you're perched here. You're perching. Ugh. I mean, that was good. That was like, that was a good ending. I just, I'm sad about it. It doesn't make it less sad. I think the unicorn is in Unicorn Forest. Yes. Raz, you came. This will likely be the last time I call upon you with a letter like this. Oh no, really? Do I sense a touch of sadness? Do you wish for us to become pen pals, hmm? I'm like, no. <laughs> anyway, where was I? I called you here for another reason. 
Something else that I would like to discuss with you. Truth is, I have made a decision. I will continue living my life with memories intact. I put a great deal of thought into it after speaking with that omen. There was one thing they said in particular. About what it means to serve humanity. I would like to contemplate that further. That is close to my current state of mind. I understand that humanity is real, and that Princess Liddell is not. But that, above all else, is why I will not erase my memory of her. Doing so would be the same as admitting there was never any value behind her remarks or her views. But there is nothing more precious to me. They are anything but worthless. Which is why I must live on under her influence. If I can fulfill even one of her wishes, then it will be as though she were real all along. That is how I feel. Even without her, your hearts are one. Hmm. You've hit the nail on the head. She lives on within the power of my imagination. Much in the same way unicorns were brought to life in the imaginations of human beings. For the sake of fantasy, for the sake of precious fairy tales. I will live on so that they can continue to have value. This battle will be much harder than any I have ever fought, but it is not one I will lose. I am a knight of Princess Liddell. I will continue to fight this anguish. As her knight, my fight for her existence is sincere and pure. I'm glad you got your energy back. It has returned, indeed, and I have put you through much hardship. Make no mistake, I only made it this far without losing sight of myself thanks to your assistance. I am delighted to know I have had such an encouraging servant waiting for my return. I'm not your servant. Come now, no need to be shy of such an auspicious title. Nonetheless, I may have decided to fight, but I must still steal myself. Monokeros is just one example of those so extremely motivated by the concept of their own imaginary existence. If I put one hoof wrong, then I fear I may end up like him myself. Live on, for him. Of course, I will wear his dreams like barding. Anyway, Raz, that is all I wish to discuss. Thank you for listening, as always. Oh, and not forgetting, with this new adventure of mine, comes the third installment of the Unicorn Saga. What happened to the first and second? The first was my fateful meeting with the princess, and the second being the events that just transpired, obviously. Oh, Raz, my ever-faithful ever Famulus, the time has come. I will ride upon your back onto the dusky horizon. Shouldn't it be the other way around? <laughs> I would never. I will gallop with the princess to the corners of the continent and to the ends of the world. Nay. We will ride beyond the very stars themselves. But for now... Let us race to Castle Lewis. It's opening night for the part three of the Unicorn Saga. Unicorn the Heaven Runner. Cognito, ergo sum. Complete. Okay, well at least one ended kind of goofily, I guess. Even though his existence was sad throughout. <laughs> Even though his existence was pretty crushing in and of itself, but, you know. Okay. It is, like, 15 minutes past 9. So it's a little past our normal stopping point. 
Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is... I guess level up this thing quick. And then I think... Let me save again. Probably should have done that first and then saved. And then I think we're going to return to title so that we can end here for today. Um, let me do some quick swapping. Let's see, let's go over here. And this is not my schedule for today <laughs> or this week. Let me get that. Let me get that fixed. Um, let me first leave Harvestella so it's not blasting in my ears. Let's see, let's see. Schedule. Let me find it. Um, okay, so this is our schedule for the week. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for working our way through Harvestella. Let me take a look and see if anyone is around for us to raid. But we are going to be playing Hollow Cure for the first time on Thursday because they added that farming update. So we're going to see how things are. And then we are going to be back um, playing Story of Seasons of Wonderful Life in year four, spread like the tail end of spring in year four on Saturday. And then we're going to be back in Harvestella on Sunday. I feel like, I don't know if we will finish Harvestella on Sunday. It's possible. It depends on how long the rest of the epilogue chapters are. So we're gonna go through more hard events. We'll probably be able to finish up just about everyone except for Arya. And then we'll probably see about doing the rest of the epilogue. Let me take a quick look at, I see Seri, I think just started Spin Rhythm and I always love her Spin Rhythm streams because they are very calming. Yeah, she just got going. So here's our raid message. First one is for subscribers. Second one is for everybody else. Um, let me, oh, my little, it's like trying to get me to pin my message, but I don't want to pin my message. But thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for chilling with me as we as we went through Harvestella. I'm getting kind of sad that it's coming to an end. Like I'm excited to see the ending, but I'm also a little sad about it. Um, but we will we will go forth and and take a look at it. We are gonna go say hi to Sari. If you don't know Sari, she is a gem. She is such a cozy, sweet red panda VTuber. Um, so if you guys could stick around, we'll go say hi to her. But otherwise, hopefully I get to catch you guys sometime the rest of this week. But if not, I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, and hopefully I get to see you guys again very, very soon.